Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Okay, now what we're going to share beginning from tonight is so important that I'd like you to make sure that you are listening in that whatever portion of the Bible that we refer to, you are quick to look at it and also to write it down. In Christianity today, there's a lot of emphasis on getting something from God. There's a lot of emphasis on having God do something for us. We are really all the time wanting God to do something. A lot of times we find ourselves asking God for something all the time. Our prayer life is full of requests. In fact, today when people talk about prayer, they associate it with requests, prayer requests. They got something they want God to do about their business. They got something they want God to do about their physical body. They, they, have, they have a need in their family for their marriage, for their finances, you know. And uh, you, if, you are, if you are acquainted with God's word in a deeper level, you just wonder, is this the way to serve God? Do we only relate with God because we want Him to do something for us? Who are we? What does God want us to be? In the mind of God, who are we? And we continually pray and ask and ask and ask and sometimes we even wonder whether or not we are heard. Many times it's because we have made a God out of our needs. We worship our needs. We're continually praying about our needs and thereby talking about our needs and concerned about our needs. To the point that our needs have gained so much attention in our lives. We don't really know which one is God. Is it our needs? Is it the God to whom we speak? Or ourselves who are in need? I want to read something to you from the Bible that will give you an idea of what the Christian life really ought to be. I'd like to, you know, I often tell you, every major truth begins from Genesis. Huh? Every final truth ends in Revelation. Come on, talk to me. I said every major truth begins its teaching from Genesis. But every final truth ends in Revelation. In other words, when you go to the book of Revelation, you'd find it there. Then you know this is the final truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 It's like God revealing himself to Moses and he said to Moses he said Moses in Exodus chapter number 6 when you read verses 2 and 3 he said Moses I want to introduce myself to you he said I am Jehovah he said my name is Jehovah but your fathers knew me as El Shaddai many of us pronounce it El Shaddai pronunciation signs say El Shaddai that's more difficult to pronounce, right? Okay. But he said, that's my name, Jehovah. But Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew me as El Shaddai. And 
But I am Jehovah. Now, look at the truth. Here was a truth that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had. But there was another truth. A newer revelation. And that's in Jehovah. The covenant God. But it didn't end there. The final truth, when you come to the book of Revelation, his name is Jesus. The name is not El Shaddai, it's not Jehovah. He said, Thou hast exalted thy word above all thy name. And who is his word? Jesus. So the final truth you find in the book of Revelation. All right. Now, having that in mind, I want to read to you in our message today from the book of Revelation. I want us to see what God expects us to be like. What is the mind of God concerning us? What does he really think about us? Who am I to God? When he looks at me, what's on his mind? What's on his mind? What's on God's mind? 